And we're live in three, two, and welcome everybody to another episode of the Planet Mullins podcast. Da, 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 da. This is <laughs> the finale for season two. I've been at this for quite a while, my 38th show. And today, wrapping it up, I've got an amazing crew of friends of mine from Venice Beach, California. Right below me on my screen, uh, screen is the fantastic Stanley Barons from War on Harmonica. Say hi, Stan. Hello, everybody. How, is, and then uh, across how are you doing, from, Rob? I'm good, man. Across from Stan, there's Vinny Caggiano, electric, eclectic guitarist and uh, local king. Hi, Vinny. Hi, Rob, and hi, everybody. Thanks for coming down to this big, amazing show we're going to have. <laughs> and up top, we have a guy I like to call the Colonator, and... Uh, this guy can draw a crowd of girls just by putting on a pair of sunglasses. He's a local Venice icon and a uh, recording engineer, a good friend. Say hello to Colin Rothwell, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, how you doing, Rob? Good, man. Good so uh, it's good to see all you guys. I'm going to start first with Stan uh, because you've got something really exciting coming up here this weekend because your band War is going to play in Venice Beach. Tell us about that. Okay, uh, on our October 30th at 3 p.m., we're we're gonna. That's when the showtime starts. Okay. Uh, it's what's happening is Warner Brothers and Rhino Records have gotten together and they're put, releasing a 50th anniversary of War, and I and there's a box set of I think it's five vinyl records. Wow, you guys are old. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. We've that's, been around. That's, that's great, right, yeah. man. Wow. And it's going to so, be, so where, they, where exactly will it be at? Well, it, they're doing this big promotion right here on the Venice Boardwalk at the end of Winwood Avenue. Uh, they'll, that's where the bandstand is going to be. Okay. And uh, there's, uh, there's other things going on. The, uh, the festivities supposedly starts at 12. And the and 30th, just for people who uh, don't know about keeping track of time, the 30th is this coming Saturday. This coming Saturday. At 3 p.m. That's awesome, usually, man. That is awesome. You know, they uh, they have Venice Boulevard blocked all the way from Lincoln East. And now with all the traffic coming into here, war, because war, war can draw 100,000 people easy. We get a pretty good crowd. You get we a pretty good feel- crowd. Yeah, yeah I've been watching. Fill the house. I've been watching your stuff on uh, Facebook and Instagram, and you guys are are really crushing it, man. Congratulations on all of that. You're back, 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 baby. Well, for the most part, uh, we'll we'll see how what what uh, goes with these mandates. Uh, some of us might have a problem with some of the mandates. Oh yeah, the mandates. Well, anytime I think about mandates, I think about Vinny because uh, Vinny is kind of a resident guy that's um, got some interesting ideas, often controversial about things that happen in the world. Um, And if you don't believe that, just go watch his first uh, episode on Planet Mullins podcast, where Uh I'm super jealous of him because he can have a cigarette in his house. I can have a cigarette? No, you're you can have a cigarette in your house. I'm I'm not allowed to do that. I'm jealous of you. No, I, I'm not allowed to do that, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny, what have you been up to, man? It's good to see you. I'm uh, doing good, hanging in there. Um, <clears throat> um, just had a show with my awesome band, The Blue Kind last Saturday over at the Mint. I didn't advertise it this time because we came on at midnight. Wow. And I don't have a lot of friends that are insomniac, so I I didn't think I could get... I couldn't believe it, though. I mean, we thought nobody was going to be in the club, and it was packed. Nobody was wearing masks. It was awesome. It was just a regular bar, a bunch of people having a great time, so it was really cool. Man, that's that's a really good band, and you guys have made an album or two by now, too, right? We're working on our second record. We've been writing the material. In fact, the, the performance was kind of a test run for the what we're, we'll be recording. So. Okay. Well, you know, it's I've always kind of thought that's a musician's inside thing. And anytime I do a, a gig, uh, I always tell people, hey, this is actually a rehearsal for our next thing, whatever it is. 
that uh, that we're doing. But the guy that's kind of kept our little band, Elegant Strangers, uh, set up and rocking and rolling for the past few years at Sidewalk Cafe is right above you, and that's Mr. Colin Rothwell. Hey, Colin. Hey, hey, guys. Thank you. Yeah, uh, it was a, a good run we had over there. I really, really do miss those days. They were very, very good times um, before the whole COVID thing shut it down. But hopefully again soon, we'll be back over there and and uh, rocking again, maybe soon, sooner rather than later. Well, that's Things cool. Back, in, back into the swing of things. But yeah, no, everything's good, man. Well, they sure, uh, sure do miss those times, though. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was just kind of a crushing thing for me before we were doing Sidewalk that Danny's went away because that was where I met Vinny and Stan actually got me on that gig. And I'll never forget coming in the first time to that thing. And I was <laughs> I was so grumpy because I just had to pay like forty dollars to park and then I, had, oh, then I had to carry gear and I was doing an audition so I knew I was going to get paid zero and I was already out 40 bucks before I got there <laughs> then Vinny looked at my rig which just kind of looks like something that you would find in a dumpster at Toys R Us you know he looked at my rig and he's like what the heck is this and Stan said no man let him set up and give him a chance <laughs> yeah the way Stan put it to me is like don't worry about it, Vinny. He's one of us. And I'm thinking, okay, he's just as insane as we are. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, uh, I've i come to be really, <clears throat> really fond of the music that we did and uh, the album that we made. Anybody that wants to find out about the record we made, it's called Only in Venice, a documentary album. The website is uh, onlyinvenice.com. And I was featuring, you know, these guys in particular, on things that I think they're really great at. So, you know, Stan is a multi-instrumentalist. If you don't know about Stan stuff, he can sing, he plays the saxophone. Um, he also is a, a very world famous harmonica player and he knows the history of the blues, man. You can see Willie Dixon behind him on that. Uh, That's Bo Diddley. I mean, Bo I, Diddley. I, see, yeah, I already Diddley. messed up my blues references. Uh, <laughs> yep. Well, you know, Bo and Willie Dixon, they were, they were good friends. Bo was not going to sign that, that photo uh, and to, you know, because he, he tried to take it from me, actually. Uh, he said, this is mine. I said, well, no, it's mine. <laughs> All I want you to do is sign it. You know, <laughs> Bo, Bo said, no, I ain't going to sign And Willie turns around and goes, hey, Bo, sign it. And <laughs> then Bo Diddley... He put his, his signature on there. It's really great. He wrote his address and phone number behind it. He says, send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never did send it to him, and, and he don't need it anymore. Man, that's hilarious. Well, um, Vinny, you know, it's been, um, I, I think, of all the guitar players that I've worked with recently, I've really come to admire your uh, amazing kind of tones and your concept of music theory and your musical viewpoints. Um, recently, I've done some gigs with some other guitar players and about two songs in, I just found myself just really missing you a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, there's no shortage of bad guitar players out there, especially in Venice. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's true. <laughs> I think that should be the headline on this podcast. No shortage of bad guitar players out there. <laughs> So, this is true. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so Colin, more about what's happening in the local scene. Like, you go down to the place in Nano's is kind of uh, one of the spots that's rolling pretty hard now. Tell us about that. Yeah, Hinano's has been they've been doing pretty good lately. Honestly, that's like the only one of the only good spots around the beach to find good live music. And uh, they've been having a lot of good bands in there lately. I know uh, my buddy Kenny's band, Good Cop, Bad Cop, has been playing in there a lot. And, uh, oh, yeah. I have, yeah, I have some friends. They, they're, they're a blues band that plays there on Saturday afternoon. So, right. Some really good blues guys. Uh, I, every time I walk by there and they're playing, they say, hey, Stan, come on, bring your harmonica in here. Yep. Yeah, that's a good spot. I uh, Brobots plays over there too, right? 
Yeah, the robots, they are phenomenal. They play there at least, at least, I would say, three or four times a month. Wow. They've been in there. But they, they travel a lot, man. The last time they were in there, I remember they were saying, hey, we're going to San Francisco tomorrow for a gig. And I was kind of like, wow. Like, that's, that, really uh, that's Dave, that's Dave Rollicky's outfit, right? Um, Is that Rollicky's thing with the, he's on sax with another sax and then like that? No, 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 oh. no, he, not, not anymore. I think maybe he was with them, but not anymore. I, you know, I haven't seen Rollicky in a while. In a while. Oh, okay. I don't know where he's playing neither, around. neither have I. I he's he's Actually, doing something. Uh, now I got a report from Matt a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, Rollicky's vaccinated, and he he uh, went and played at this really crowded club and got COVID. Oh wow. no! <clears throat> yeah, no shit. So. Oh my. <laughs> Well, you know, the, the, that's that's, uh, that's that sounds typical to me. You know, safe and effective, man. Bad. Wow, man. Well, bad. I yeah, that that's a shame. I mean, I um, I was doing some gigs with Hubert Laws in May, and that was a requirement, not by Hubert, and not really that much by the airline, but the venue said that yeah. none of us could enter the venue unless we were vaccinated. And uh, so I went and took the Pfizer shot and um, coming home from that uh, Dallas gig was really bad because you have to put your phone on a QR machine in the airport and then it gives you about a 30 question questionnaire to fill out before you're allowed to fly back to L.A. Have you found that, Stan? Uh, no, not, uh, not really. Not yet. Oh, my God. That sounds ridiculous. Yeah, it was really bad. I mean, everything has gotten so digital and so crazy. And that's one of the things I miss about our band is that we just over the years, we kind of evolved into this organic thing that was just wacky and real fun. And we go any direction. Yeah, let's uh, Rob, let's talk about the band. Uh, you know, we were a band together. You yeah, me, we stand. Colin was our kind of manager, and he uh, got things together for us and helped us a whole bunch. So, uh, wow. so let's talk about the evolution of the band. I know that you and Stan were a duo called Cosmic Coast, right? Which I hadn't known about. And in the meantime, I was busking on Westminster, and of course, I, you know, Stan would come by. Okay, Stan, come play harmonica, you know. And then uh, I asked Colin, I said, Colin, any chance, I, like me and Stan are really good duet. Can you get us a gig? And well, I wanted to. That's that's the whole thing. I wanted to get you in somewhere. And I was advocating to get you to play somewhere. And then Danny's, of course, was the, right. was the spot. Then we got and Danny's. So, so fortunately, we had Ravi, the wonderful manager at the time, great Ravi. And he was able to, you know, say, yeah, bring him in. Let's see how it does. Yeah. And, and, and it did. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I um I'm super grateful that we got a bunch of that stuff recorded and um you know, Vinny uh hearing you play in any kind of format is always great and same thing with you Stan and um I'm getting these alert messages saying that Zoom is going to cut off the meeting, which I guess is because we had a little bit of a rocky start. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I love it. So Vinny, you were uh, you were talking about the evolution of our band, The Elegant Strangers, but we actually went by a, quite a few different names before we came up with that one, right? Yeah, well, it was a kind of an ongoing joke that every time we were billed at Danny's, I would give the band a different name, which is awful for marketing, but it just seemed really funny to me to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I remember we had that discussion. I was like, how will they ever know that it's us? Yeah. And, um, but, you know, some of the photos of those little promos that you made, like the jazz janitors one is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I photoshopped our images on, on like a bunch of janitors and I did it. I had one called the 1890s. We, the name was the 1890s and we're dressed up like 1890s <laughs> musicians and, you know, playing, holding tubas and, yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs> I, lo I love the one that kind of looks like we're the three musketeers with the swords and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, but that's just, you know, part of the quirky personality stuff about you that everybody loves in Venice and why you have such a 
a big following and stuff. So it's cool because when we first started playing, we didn't really have any charts to go by. And I was just watching the guitar neck and Stan was in the middle of the thing just saying, you know, let's just get through a set or two. And by the time we had gotten through about a set and a half, it already started to sound like a band. Yeah. It clicked in pretty quick. The, uh... Yeah. The amazing thing about the Elegant Strangers was like, first of all, when me and Stan played, it was always spur of the moment. You know, I'd say, I'd say Stan, do you know this tune? He'd go, yeah, yeah, I'll see if I can work it out. And, you know, we'd play it. And yeah, I when... would lie most of the time. Right, right. It was just... <laughs> do you know this song? I, I'd say yeah, but it was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I remember the night you came down, Rob. Uh, uh, Stan came up to me, like, or got in touch with me in the afternoon and said, Oh, by the way, I invited my friend Rob to play with us. I'm like, Dude, like, you just invited some guy to play with us? What, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> yeah, because it's your gig. Right. And Stan goes, don't worry, he's one of us. Don't worry, you know. And then uh, when you came up and played, Rob, it, for me, it was like, okay, this this is working. This is so much fun. You just were See? right in the vibe and just, I love just that you Just goes to show you got to trust me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it was, um, it was something that I was doing a lot earlier with Cosmic Coast is I would uh, set up that wacky rig where I have a, keyboard bass on the left side and then a snare and a, a cymbal on the right. And Stan would come over to my place and that's how he worked up the Cosmic Coast set list. Um, that's how he worked up Chloe's material. When uh, Chloe was in town, we would play over at the Wits End. And interestingly enough, like, you know, it wasn't a thing where we needed a lot of heavy bass drum and the elegant strangers like you know bass drums are a pain in the ass to carry around and i understand why they're so important to so many bands but with us it never to me it just never felt like it was missing you know right yeah. and it wasn't it, it wasn't yeah it wasn't really needed just for, the, just for the sake of the viewers understanding rob came down uh, with one hand he had a keyboard in hand and the other he had a snare drum and I'm like, I'm looking at this guy going, what the hell is this about? <laughs> and he went, Rob winds up playing uh, bass on one hand, which kind of sufficed for the bass drum, really, you know? Right. And, and snare with the other. And it was just like outrageously cool. So, yeah. yeah. Well, then over time, cool. I mean, the, um, the Danny's thing ended up just kind of being like a regular house gig for, for us. And for a while, we had uh, Matty D jumping in on sax and then we'd have rollicky would come in on sax and trombone sometimes and then um damon, Day, damon came in jammed with us yeah, damon came in and sang and um my, it was just really neat because danny's was the kind of place that was just to me it was exemplary of the spirit of venice because it had a kind of an open door policy there were people who could just float right in off the little square there by the flag they could skate in and check it out um there was this one girl that used to come in the early days and she just looked like she was kind of a bored scared kid in a way and she would sit right across um from me because i was always on uh on stage left i guess it is and you know the restrooms are back there and she'd get in that last booth there and she would just stare at stan for like hours <laughs> 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 and I think I, she might have only been like 18 or 19 or something, but she never looked happy. So uh, about the second time she came in and did this, I just walked over to her kind of just cold call um, one time. And I just said, hey, look, you always seem like you're really doing badly or something. Are you OK? And she said, yeah, I'm OK. I'm just listening to the band. So it wasn't but about two years after that that she moved to Nashville and became a star. And her name is Christina Vane. Oh, yes. oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, she was like a teen skate, skate kid that would just skate in there and she never drank anything. She never ordered anything. She just came in and stared at Stan for a few hours. 
and uh, checked out our band and uh, went on later to just be super confident. I mean, she sings great, she writes great, she plays banjo and dobro and 12 string and six string and all that stuff. And I see her on Facebook all the time and she was just one of the first people I remember meeting on that gig. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She she came a long way. She uh, she she really improved a lot. Her singing and and her her, her instrumentation, guitar playing, banjo. She's she's doing it. She's uh really into that authentic Appalachian music. Yeah, the, the serious acoustic thing. But you know, Danny's was that kind of a place because people could just come in and be relaxed and hang out. And now from what I hear after kind of looking at it and talking to Colin, the thing that is Danny's now is kind of like a closed off ventilation oh, box where there's yeah. like none of that outside kind of energy that was coming in because I would feed off of that outside energy. I'd be up there and with those doors open, especially like yeah. on 4th of July, I could look outside and I could see 500 people all dancing and skating in time to our band. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's terrible what they did to that place now. And and you have to and you have to be fully vaccinated to get in. You gotta show your freaking ID and you gotta show your vaccination card just to get in the damn door. And you gotta have a reservation unless there's a spot open at the bar. Wow. And it's just it's the, you know it's just ridiculous. It's terrible, terrible. It's a disgrace what they did to that place. It pisses, what pisses me off the most about it is um, that they they come in, they make this high end, trendy, super cool place. It's totally uncomfortable, and they they advertise Wednesday night, locals night. Like, oh, gee, thank you for letting the locals in. Like Danny's, right. you can walk by Danny's any given night and see somebody you know sitting at the bar. Mm -hmm. And now it's right. just like exclusive nonsense no, no and i went in there for that locals night too by the way and it the sound in there is terrible oh wow they put these huge giant like like concert size <laughs> speakers mounted from the ceiling down and they're just all tinny and bright and it sounded like a shoebox in there wow it's terrible terrible that place has always had terrible acoustics. It's terrible. Yeah. From from day one, that place had terrible acoustics. When it was the St. Mark's. Yeah. Right. I remember you used to run sound there, Stan, when it was the St. Mark's. I used to play there in those years. Yeah, well, I, I played there. I had two, two night a week gig there. Uh, every Sunday night, I had the, the R&B band. And then on Wednesday nights, I was doing a gig with Red Calendar, Earl Palmer, and Art Hillary. We were doing it like a, like a jazz thing on Wednesday nights. And uh, Sunday night became a, a huge night there. Uh -huh. could, I mean, everybody, you know, what, what I did in the very beginning, I said to the guy, don't charge any admission. I said, I'm going to fill the place up with really beautiful girls on a Sunday night with a great <laughs> band and, and see what happens from there. Mm -hmm. and within like two or three weeks, there was a line of people around the block wanting to get in on Sunday night mm -hmm. until he started saying, well, let's charge him $10 a head to get in. There went the line. <laughs> it, that got rid of the line of people, you know, they don't, they don't get it that you, you take the money out of people's pocket before they even get inside to spend the money. It doesn't make any sense. Let them in and uh, let them spend that money that's in their pocket at the bar or by dinner, drink, drinks for their friends. Right. You, and you, you, a business can't survive unless you have customers. Yeah. And when you're cutting the customers off before you, they even walk in the door, you're not going to survive. I just never understood the whole concept with venues in general where entertainment is literally the very last thing that they think of if at all you know like it seems that especially with a place that's a high-end place like i used to work at this place um in brentwood that was a steakhouse and they would make on a friday night they would pull in 30 grand you know they they had a nice piano in there the stage was about four feet square 
teeny. Like the upright bass players, if they were taking a solo with a bass bow, they would literally be hitting my right shoulder. That's how close <laughs> we were. But a Coke in there was 12 bucks. That's yeah. ridiculous. And parking was eight bucks. And they had a very, you know, um, bougie kind of crowd in there. A lot of celebrities went into that place and stuff too. But it's like the entertainment is always secondary. Like the list of rules that came with playing a gig at that place was insane. You know, um, I've played at places where there's one place in Orange County where it says in your contract that if you play Brick House by the Commodores, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I, I have played, I played at another place that uh, did not allow Mustang Sally. Yeah, there you go. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, uh, you'd get fired if you, if you played Mustang Sally. Vinny. I, I have an idea, Rob. Why don't we go around the round table okay. and uh, between Danny's and the Sidewalk Cafe, let's talk about our favorite moments. Each of us had, must have had a favorite moment at one of these places. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to start because my it comes right to mind. There's there a couple of them from the sidewalk. And it was the night that it was probably close to our closing time. Everybody was really blasted. And we were playing, heard it through the grapevine, and Tree Man comes walking in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a classic. Now, for totally people who don't that. know who Tree Man is, uh, call and tell people who that is. He's just a classic character that dresses up on stilts and dresses up like a giant tree and goes walking around the boardwalk. And I don't know what he really does. <laughs> what else he really does, but that's about it. He's walking up and down the boardwalk all day. But he, yeah, he's like 13 <laughs> feet high or something, though. He, yeah, he doesn't yeah. sit inside the club. You see him coming in, and you're like, I remember looking over at Vinny and just, because I'd never seen that before. It was like, holy hell. <laughs> yeah, he was so going in there to like, use the bathroom or something. I don't know how he was able to even do that. but. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, well, that's that's one from me. Uh, uh, Vinny, how about you? All right. Well, uh, the first one that comes to mind always, I don't know why this is, but uh, it must have been our second show and we never, ever, ever rehearsed. So it was always like, hey, Rob, you know this one? Yeah, yeah. What key? That sort of thing. So anyway, we it might have been uh, one of the Donovan songs, um, Mellow Yellow or something, but we we tried to just go into the song and you know meanwhile there's an audience right and i just i said wait wait the intro was wrong i stopped the band de the band dead in his tracks and said no the intro should go like this let's try it again and we we tried it again and we flubbed it and i mean this is right in front of an audience i just love that that's so venice it's like yeah whatever and finally we got the intro right went into the song it was a great moment, great moment. yeah well the song list was amazing and we'll come back to that stan what's a, a great moment for you at danny's or sidewalk uh well uh you know i do have memories of sonia that's exactly oh, what i was thinking. Uh, yep. you know I, I mean and she was also there was very much about sonia on the only in venice record yeah yeah the song called tequila dancer that night <laughs> where you came up with tequila dancer that was that was exactly what she was doing. Uh, it was it was totally amazing. She, I, I don't know how she could fly through the air and actually still say stay on her feet, <laughs> being as drunk as she was. But uh, yeah, she she was a, I'm an amazing girl. I'm really sad that she didn't survive. But uh, I'll I'll never forget. The night you came over with the record, and she was here, and she never heard the song before. <laughs> <laughs> and so then when we played it, she goes, "Is that about me?" <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah, when we were was... when we were at Sidewalk that night, it was always kind of like a, it would be a shot over the bow. There would be like a warning would come in from somewhere. It'd be like Collins, like. Sonia's outside by the bike racks. <laughs> Look out. Or yeah. Joanne is, uh, is, you know, crawling with one shoe towards the 
restroom, be aware, <laughs> these kinds of things. And Sonia came in that night and she was pretty amped up. Um, oh, yeah. She started all the way over by the, you know, not that far from the first bus area there. And there was a guy who was dancing with another girl and right in front of Vinny. The guy was probably about 30 or so, very buff guy, and he was standing there. And Sonia, out of the clear blue sky, just starts running. Running. At full and speed. And jumps on the guy. <laughs> and then she leaps up into the air and lands right He's on it. Him. Right on that guy. <laughs> and that was right in front of Vinny, man. I was like, whoa. <laughs> that kind of stuff is crazy, man. Yeah. And then we had the uh, we had the hula hoop girls, Emma, Emma, yeah, oh yeah, Emma, Emma, yeah. Emma the uh, do all those those tricky hula hoop stuff right in front of the band to, while we were playing. Emma and Justine was in there for a while early on. Yeah, yeah, you know, the electric hula hoops with the digital lighting that was programmable. It was awesome, and Emma did this unbelievable thing where she was able to bend over and do the hula hoop around her ass from behind. It was the most horrible <laughs> thing I'd ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's something you learn in West Hollywood and then you take it to other areas. <laughs> but yeah, um, Emma and of course, um, you know, we had, we had just all of those, um, uh, what do they call the art walk? Is that what it's called? Art crawl. Oh, the yeah. Art, art crawl. crawl. So, yeah. For people that don't know much about Venice, there's a lot of just kind of wacky historic things that happen. Like they have a, uh, you know, King and Queen of Venice contest, and they have this thing called the art crawl, and then they've got, you know, parades all over the place where people dress up wacky and bike rides and stuff. So I come into the sidewalk one night. And, you know, they would have to set up our stage area because it didn't stay up all week. They just would unpack it and set it up there. But I come in this one night and it's already set up and there's a girl on it. And somebody's pointing a light at her. She's hardly wearing anything at all. And I think that she's a mannequin. I just I was looking at her. I thought, wow, this girl is, you know, but she's very lifelike. And then there was this table set across where you guys and I would sit and have our dinner breaks. A group of people sitting there all sketching this girl on our stage. And it ended up, it was an art crawl thing. And the art crawl people would come through to see like a little art exhibit. And in our case, it was a live, almost naked girl. Huh. Just set up mm. right where the guitar amp goes. Yeah, Remember that? <clears throat> I I don't actually, but I'm sure it happened. I'm trying to remember it. <laughs> well, I remember was... it. I remember it. I I do remember that. That was yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, might not have been there because I probably wouldn't remember that. You might might not have been there. There were some gigs that it was just me and Rob. Yeah. Right. Or or you, Robin and, and Matt. Or me, Rob and Matt. Yeah. Right. right. Mm. Yeah. Well, it was. It was, always sure was there, fun. But... it was always kind of fun as, I mean, we would do this more at the sidewalk than we did at Danny's. Um, but a lot of times towards the end of the gig at sidewalk, when it would get kind of slow and stuff, Vinny and I would just venture off into like psychedelic jam band land. And mm -hmm. because there was really none of this kind of, you know, restrictive vibe going on, in those years, which was like, I don't know, 2014 to 19 or so, Vinny and I would crank it loud. I mean, we would be up to 10 and we would just be doing like a 10 minute long jam on the end of a Hendrix tune or Lucy in the Sky. Oh man, that was awesome. What was the Doors tune we did? That was the takeoff point. Um, riders, on, of the, riders on the Sky. No, no, no. no it went, break no, on through. That one. It was Break on Through. Was it Light My Fire? No. Break on through. No. Break on through. Oh, break and, on through. And we yeah. go from break on through into uh, uh, a reggae. James? Oh, yeah. Well, we did the the James Bond theme, right? Right. We did Wipeout, 
Right. Yeah. I, I kept thinking, of what's an E? What's an E? And I would just throw it out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I remember nights over there, too, where we would have like a, you know, old school musician kind of crisis because, you know, I don't know if you guys see a lot of the younger musicians that are coming out, but a lot of them from Berkeley and stuff were all like vegan guys that drink a certain kind of tea and they work out and, you know, smoke really bothers them and they'll only drink a craft beer, but that's every eight weeks. We're kind of the old school guys. And I remember nights where I'd just be like, Colin, do you have a cigarette? And he'd be like, no, man, I'm out. Are you out? He'd be like, yeah. Okay, here's 20 bucks, man. Make the run. Yeah. <laughs> Calling and go down the street. And then sometimes he'd be back in five minutes and sometimes he'd be back in an hour. <laughs> you know, uh, one of my favorites was the Danny's closing party, which was an all day marathon. We started. At That's four. what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you got uh, a story well, from go that ahead. one. Yeah, that, no, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, that's the, that was the best time ever, though. I mean, my yeah, favorite ahead. is uh, Rob was getting a little bit, maybe he had <laughs> a snoot full too many. I, I don't remember, but at <laughs> one point, Rob gets up. He goes, "Vinny, uh, let me grab the mic. I want to make an announcement." And this is somewhere <laughs> around eleven o'clock at night. And Rob goes, "Listen, people, Danny's is closing tonight." Permanently. Light up cigarettes, smoke some weed, <laughs> enjoy right. yourselves. And sure enough, people started lighting up cigarettes and smoking weed. It was amazing. It was amazing. I, I remember yeah, telling classic. people, I said, what are they going to do? Shut the club down forever? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Shut down forever and have power. <laughs> Unfortunately, I missed that one. Oh, man. Oh, was, yeah. Yeah, know, I wasn't there. But uh, Stan, you, I know that you don't drink because it would void the warranty on your liver. Right. But, I mean, Ravi, who was the manager in those days, he kept coming out of the basement because they didn't want to let any of that liquor go to waste. So he oh. was bringing up like cases of tequila and setting mm. full bottles of tequila on the stage. Wow. <laughs> Just yeah. passing out rum and he had kegs going and all of this stuff. And it was... It was one of the most fun nights I've ever had as far as being, you know, a Venetian. It was everything yeah. about Venice that yeah, I really I was liked. kind of bummed that I, uh, I missed it. I mean, I was out of town with the war band. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, I remember that. Yeah, well, you know, I <laughs> here's another funny sidewalk one that was from the last time that we were there. And Stan, I hope you don't mind me telling, telling this one, but... Um, I'll let you know if I mind or not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but our gig there was always on a Thursday night. So I show up on Thursday night and, you know, I would pull my car in and Colin would come out and start carrying my stuff in and they put the stage up and, um, and the, uh, one of the waitresses came over to me and said, Oh yeah. Are you guys like coming into play? And I said, yeah. And they said, well, um, is Stan going to be here? And I said, yeah. And they said, well, he was here by himself last night. But <laughs> there was no gig. <laughs> he was here on the wrong night. I, I, I came on a total wrong, wrong day of the week. <laughs> I do remember that. You know, but uh, one of the things you know, that's I, been so great is just the open-mindedness and the coolness of everybody in this area. And I think, you know, that's kind of gotten lost in some ways with all of the gentrification and the um, stuff that's going on with the unhoused people here and the virus. You put all of that together, and I don't know about you guys, but it's been kind of hard for me to stay mentally level through all this crap. It's been hard on everyone, Rob. It's been hard on everyone. Yeah, I'm going yep, to probably sure. run into some problems because I, I do not have a vaccination passport. And places that are requiring it, I might not be able to get in. Uh-huh. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't know if my, how, how much uh, it's going to my, affect my job, but uh, I'm not getting vaccinated because I don't 
I don't do well with vaccinations. I mean, it was on a kind of vaccinations that I ended up needing a new liver. So wow. I, I, uh, I don't do well with vaccinations. I've been refusing them for the past 30 years or so. Every time the flu shot comes out, they want to give me a flu shot. And I say, no, I don't want a flu shot. Yeah, yeah just it seems like it. It's everybody's between a rock and a hard place. And in my case, I just had to go ahead and do it because yeah, no you know, doing the Hubert Laws gig, Hubert is 82 this year. Yeah. And, you know, any chance I, I get to still play with Hubert, I'm going to do whatever I can. I mean, we did in, uh, in May, I think it was in May or April or May, we did a big appearance on the uh, Carnegie Hall network for a celebrating the life of chick korea yeah and yeah, I, I remember I don't that think, man, but he did that at hubert's house and i don't think he was vaccinated at that time oh, wow. but when we would go out on tour and start doing those i would much rather get vaccinated and be sick for a day or two um or you, you know um and still be able to gig than to not be able to but i it really should be something you know that somehow there needs to be some rules that will kind of apply then i see i i have what they call natural immunity i i was sick with that flu early on uh -huh. and and i built up a natural immunity to it you know by all by all think uh by all accounts ever since the pandemic actually started i never wore a mask i never washed my hands I, n I never did any any of the protocols uh -huh. when, when they when they locked down i went out when they closed the beach i was on it uh you know they i hung around crowds of people i hugged my friends yeah i shook i shook hands with with filthy homeless people i i'm not a germophobic person and by all yeah i'm 75 years old they say i'm gonna die from it I beg to differ. I'm not going to die. For <laughs> you know, uh, I, I am str one strong individual that's passed death several times. Right. They can't make me get vaccinated because I don't do well with a vaccination. Then and if I lose my job, well, that's, that's what's going to happen. I don't know. Right. What do you think about this, Vinny? Well, you know, uh, to me, there's so much that's obvious about all of this. Um, if you do any little bit of research, even you'll find out that uh, Pfizer, uh, you know, puts a lot of money into mainstream news, which we can't call news anymore. They're propaganda outlets. So we see all these advertisements for Pfizer. It's really clear and obvious that they're they're this is a big sales pitch for the, them to make vaccines that people will take every six months and pay for them. Uh, so uh, to me, the whole thing is a major scam, and it's an obvious one. And not only that, but people in general are not, first of all, people that get vaccine injured, and trust me, there are thousands and thousands of these people, and uh, they get suppressed. If they tell their story on YouTube, they get suppressed. This is crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah, the censorship is, is very prevalent now. Yeah, it's uh, that's something that I've found is been like one of my pet peeves recently and the other one is, that really gets to me is the lengthening of processes and what i mean right. by that is let's say i okay so i had this thing today where i needed to post just one post not on the rob mullins piano page but on the rob mullins music page just to put up this review about me and jimmy now it used to be I'd load that page and there'd be a little box there and say, what's on your mind? And I go, blam, the review post done. You know what it is now? I have no idea. You can't find that thing of how to post at all. What starts and it says there's missing information here. Um, you haven't done X. You haven't done Y. You haven't done D for uh, Z for six months. Now, have you visited the business center? There are 22 areas in the business center. And 
you've got reactions from these 30 people you didn't bother to read their messages and i'm just like tearing my hair out because i have four minutes before i got to teach a class and i can't even get the post made yeah yeah you know yeah. so the lengthening of processes it's like you know just as few as steps as you can have to anything then the quicker you can go on to something else it's like you know contracts are 30 pages instead of one and uh you know tax returns are 200 pages instead of four and i could go on and on and on i know, you know. about that stuff i mean that's what i don't like about the modern world because i get an alert every day when i get up from google and it says your birthday is missing your birthday is missing that's my greeting every morning it's not like how you doing Oh, wow. Myself, why on earth does Google have to confirm my birthday every day for me to be allowed to use my email? <laughs> right, Colin? Uh, <laughs> so you know what? I predicted back in the 90s, I predicted a lot of what's happening right now. I remember in, in the early 2000s, I made a post on Facebook saying, once the corporations and the government get a hold of the Internet, it's going to be no fun. They're going to ruin it. And sure enough, they did. I remember the wilds of the Internet back in the 90s. <laughs> it was it was like just a party. It was, you know, and it was ugly as sin too. the, the gifts and everything that they posted. It was really oh, ugly. It was, it was so fun <laughs> in the fun. early days. Yeah, it was all yeah. it was all really fun in the early days. And then as you, you know, make more and more restrictions on things, you start taking the fun out of it. And that brings that brings me to the other point. Um, did you guys notice that people just kind of don't have a sense of humor anymore? Like you can't joke with them about anything and they're going to get so uptight about the smallest little thing and then crucify you on next door or Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody is opinion. so offended. Everybody, the least little thing will offend somebody. You know what I yeah. tell them? Fuck them. <laughs> you know that reminds me of a new yorker cartoon i recently posted it's a news report and it says uh it's uh well it's been confirmed everything is offensive <laughs> that's it that's just about it and everybody's racist no matter what yeah Everybody, the world is no matter no matter what you do they they tag race the word racist on it it's just kind of a sad thing that you know the internet which could have just been this really massive positive force is just kind of not most of the time i mean there's one website that's kind of a community thing that i won't mention their name but um last week i was it was the end of the night and i was partying pretty hard and they send emails constantly to you about this person posted this this person posted that this person posted the other thing but all it really is is cat news, like news about people's cats and <laughs> um, and people being broken into. And so I went on to the website and I tried to quit my membership on the website. They won't allow me to quit. No. I can't cancel. I can't get off it. And finally, the last thing that I said there, hopefully for for good was i really don't have anything in common with anybody here because i don't have cats i don't need a vet i don't need a nanny and i'm you know i probably said something like and i'm smart enough to not have a shiny new car and keep my car dirty in venice <laughs> you know something like that yeah uh, but um, anyway, all right, I think we should uh, wrap it up here. Colin, anything left to say on your behalf, sir? I, I don't, yeah, I'm good, yeah. Yeah, it was great seeing you, brother, and I hope to see you out on the boardwalk soon. Yeah, let me know when you're around. Okay. Stan, thanks, and good luck with your concert coming up this weekend. Oh, yeah, well, we've got two shows. We're going to do the Alameda County Fair on Friday night. Wow. Oh, wow. Uh, and I'll get to see my daughter. She's coming. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen Chloe in months. Yeah. Wow. That's great. And Vinny, last night I was noodling around on my keyboard on that scale that you can play that one scale and cover all the giant steps. Mm -hmm. 
So let's get together and we'll talk about we'll that. We'll talk about it. Sounds great, man. All right, and everybody. Just okay, a quick we're... plug. Just a quick plug here, Rob. Uh, everybody, you know, if, if you live in Venice, come visit me on Westminster near the boardwalk. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday between two and four, and I'll be busking over there. Uh, except for Saturday, I'm taking the day off so I could go watch War play. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah, that'll uh -huh. be fun. All right. We'll see you guys there. Take care, all. All right. Take care. See you, Rob. Right. See you then. See you, Colin.